All right, so now we're gonna write the offer to purchase. So boom, offer to purchase. Now the beautiful thing about this is it will pull in some instances um, the information from MLS. Um, it's not in this specific situation, but sometimes it will and it should give you the option when you go to create the loop. If when you create the loop initially, you put the address in. If you create the loop just with their names and then go back and add the address later, it's probably not gonna do it. Um, okay. so just an FYI about that. But the good thing is you can do a lot of the things uh, right here and you can also search by it and pull the stuff up. So let's see if it comes up if we do it this way. Boom, that's always good. So let's go with the one that's got the MLS number since it's got MLS beside it. Yes, we're going to import the data. All right, so see, boom, it entered a lot of this stuff for you, which is good. It just saves some time. But we need the tax ID or the parcel ID here, and that doesn't pull over. So we can come, we should be able to come right to the listing here, and it's right here. Oh, okay. So all you gotta do is click it and pull it. And then just copy paste. And then all your information is in there already. That's great. Here we're gonna put all the purchase info. So you said we're gonna make the offer $450,000. Mm -hmm. What have we talked about earnest money wise? Typical 1%? Yeah. So we'll do 4,500. And who's the attorney that's gonna hold the earnest money? Um, I don't have his info yet. You want me to get that real quick? For the sake of what we're doing here, we can just put TBD, but you're just gonna go back and edit it and drop in. So Jackson Law or Rizzo and Blackburn or whoever the folks tell you they use. Just remember that you'll waive that line on the professional services disclosure for the attorney because they won't be using one of our providers. Okay. <coughs> what close date did you have in mind? Um, have you all talked about that? We haven't. Okay. I guess they were looking to see what they would say first. Do they have, um, for the sake of argument, let's just do 30 days. That's typically what you're going to do for a loan. You can probably back it up for cash if they've already got <clears throat> the cash in an account where they can get access to it. But okay. for the sake of argument, let's just do um, 30 days and then you can come back and edit it. Okay. Now, typically, we don't want to close for team purposes on a Monday because that's when we do our team meetings. Right. Or... Tuesday, at least morning, because that's when we do our in-person meetings. So it's better to try and shoot for Wednesday when we don't have any meetings. Okay. But I also want your folks to get closed, so we're just going to pick the first day. Um, your folks are already have their information in here. Um, you don't really need to put their contact info when you add them to the loop. Really, all you need to do is put their name and their email address, and then just pick buyer or seller, depending on who it is. What, have you talked about the property? It includes everything, correct? Yes, furniture, all that fun stuff. So for cash, we can just write it all in here. If it was a loan, we would do a bill of sale and not put all that in here because it's going to play with the lender and cause some issues. Okay. So we're going to, in home as of, we're just going to put a date to clarify. And even if you were just doing like refrigerator, washer and dryer, things that aren't fixtures that would typically convey, I always recommend saying in home as of the day that you saw it or whatever. Okay. Just because you don't want somebody who's unscrupulous to say, well, you put fridge and there's a fridge in there and they replace the nice stainless one with a white piece of crap from the garage or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then with the legal description, you should be able to pull that right from the MLS as well. Or you can pull it from um, Realist. So let's see if it's in here. All right, it's right here under the legal description here. So it's basically this whole big thing. Right there in the legal description, you're just gonna copy and paste that in the legal description. And sometimes what I'll do is pull out just the lot number and put it in the lot line. Okay. Because you want three things on the contract filled out in this section, and I'll show you when we get to the contract. And typically, lot, legal description, and the pen are enough for that section. Okay. So you're just going to hit autofill, and then that's going to drop this stuff in here. 
now we need the name of the seller and the seller is either going to be here but it's just their last name it's going to be on the disclosures ideally that you pull from mls or you can click here on the realist link in mls and pull up the tax info and you can get it from there so we'll just give it a second to load so michael and sylvia fagenbaum so i'm just going to copy this real quick And then that's most of the first page. So you see you've got seller name, buyer's names, the address, city, county, zip, state. Here's the lot number. Here's the pin number. Here's the legal description. Those are the things I want to make sure you have in it every time. Sometimes you might put the subdivision condo. Sometimes you might put the deed book, all that. It's really not necessarily as important as these three. Make sure you have these three at least. Okay. And then have you talked about due diligence? Um, probably just 500. Okay. For a little more expensive properties, they may want more. Um, okay. I typically am never going to do less than 250, no matter how inexpensive the home is. Mm -hmm. Most of the times I'm not gonna do less than 500. When you start getting up into around 400,000, people might want 1,000 and above. If you're in a multiple offer situation, that number is even gonna go up because it helps increase um, the strength of your offer. Right. Now, and especially as an initial offer, I think that's fine. So now we just need to do the quick math and come down and bring the total here. So you've got the purchase price minus these two, which they're going to get credit for at closing. This means that they would owe that for the house at closing. So you just want to update that there. Okay. And we're almost done with the first page, except for this. Due diligence fee is due right away. And that needs to be by a personal check or cashier's check. The earnest money deposit you've got within five days, so always check that. And then I would put personal check and encourage your folks to do that unless they're gonna get a bank check. Okay. Any questions about that? They would just give that to their attorney, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that goes, the earnest money goes directly to the attorney, the due diligence money goes directly to the seller. And we can talk later about how you instruct them to deliver that and everything else that you need to do to get it. Okay. But as far as first pace goes, that's everything. Okay. Um, and then of course their initials are assigned there. So this is where you're gonna come back and want to edit the attorney info. This is the only place you need to edit it really, right okay. here. Just come back and change the name once you get the name of your attorney. Due diligence period, that's typically about three weeks from the day we go under contract. Have y'all talked about that? Are they good with that, you think? Yeah, he does wanna do the due diligence period for sure. All right, so that would put us Basically, usually I'll do the day, three weeks from the day after I'm writing the offer, unless I'm writing the offer early in the day and they anticipate signatures that night. Okay. Um, settlement date, that's populated um, right here. That's populated from the other screen that we did. Okay. Um, signature or initials there again. This just talks about things that automatically convey because they're considered fixtures. So just reminding people what that means items leased and that are not owned which don't convey you would put here so say um there's a satellite but they want to take the satellite dish you would put that here okay that's typically considered a fixture but they're saying they're not going to do it okay. same thing here if there's something like that's supposed to convey which is not going to convey like grandma's chandelier in the dining room they're saying we'll replace it with another one you would put that in this part Okay. I'm sorry, this is where you're just disclosing things that are leased and not owned, like satellite dishes, like the propane tank, et cetera. Okay. This section is where you say there are things that should convey but aren't because we're taking them with us. And then this is the section where we put typically refrigerator, washer, dryer, things that aren't considered fixtures that they want to come with the property. In this instance, we're going to put everything. And sometimes you have to click that and then edit text and then you enter it here. And I don't know why that didn't save earlier. It should have, but regardless, it's there now. Initials. This is where you're representing 
how they're paying for it. So if they were getting a loan, you'd say does, and then like conventional and fixed rate. And typically you don't need to put like their loan to value or the length of the loan that they're getting or their percentage. If you're in a multiple office situation or if it's an older agent, they might want all of those boxes complete. Typically you don't need to do that. It's just, yes, they need a loan. Yes, this is the type conventional VA, FHA or whatever. Um, and this, that's just because you're saying paying cash, you just simply put does not. Okay. That's it. And then they assume that they're paying cash. On this part, it's saying they either do or they do not have to sell property to use the money from that property to buy this one. And this is, it's, I'm correct, and that they don't, right? Correct. It, so you just check does not. If they do, you click does, you put in the property address, and then you complete the rest of this information below saying yes, it is under contract and then you would also need to deliver a copy of that contract with your offer or at least after you get under contract if it's if they need to sell it and it's not under contract then you have to disclose what stage they're in as far as getting it listed okay makes sense yes all right this is talking about the disclosures so are the disclosures online the um, property disclosure and the mineral oil and gas rights um, I believe so. so. If they are, they're going to be right here under documents. Just look first. Okay. They are. It on there. Was it on there? Yep. They're both in there. Okay. And that's good. So we'll be able to add those. Um, so all you're simply going to do is click yes that they have received the property disclosure prior to signing this offer because you're going to send that to them as part of this process and also the mineral oil and gas rights. Okay. Yeah. I printed everything out and gave it to them. Okay. Perfect. Um, the only time where that's going to be exempt is going to be if it's a foreclosure, then the okay. disclosures don't apply. So you're going to be checking yes all the time. If for some reason you're writing an offer and the agent hasn't given you the disclosures yet, um, you should not give any due diligence as part of the offer until you get the disclosures. So I would hold off from writing anything until they give those to you. Okay. You could just get the conversation started. Um, initials again. This is just how long they've owned the property. I'm pretty sure it's been for uh, at least one year. That should be in the MLS listing. If the home is built prior to 1978, they'll also need to fill out the lead-based paint disclosure. This one doesn't apply, so you just leave it blank. Are there, is there an HOA for this property? There's not. So um, then you'll just simply put in here that there are not any proposed special assessments and they're not any confirmed. So it's proposed means the HOA is talking about it, but they haven't decided upon it yet. Okay. Confirmed means yes, there is one and maybe it just hasn't kicked in yet or it is in place. So it's above and beyond your regular HOA dues. So you need to disclose that. So, and then you'll need to find out what it entails how long it lasts and what's the amount and disclose that all that in there. The seller agent should have all that in MLS for you to see and convey to your client. Perfect. But in this part, we don't have to worry about it. Um, this is where you actually put in the information about the HOA if there is one. So if there is one, you check the box, you put in the name of the HOA, you put in how much and how often the dues are due. Then you put in the name of the contact or just, the address, the phone number, and then the website, if there's a website for the HOA. In some really large communities, there's two HOAs. There'll be one for the master and then one like for their specific area. Because in some really large HOAs, you've got single family homes and townhomes and condos. So you've got a general fee for the amenities everybody shares, but then you might have like um, maintenance or insurance for a condo that's part of it, which is different and doesn't apply to everybody. So that's why there are two boxes. In this instance, you're going to leave them both blank. Dogs are having fun. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like it. Down here, we've got just um, initials again. This is where you're putting their names, how they want it to appear on the deed. Okay. And then if you're asking the seller to pay any closing costs, this is where that amount goes. I'm assuming we're not asking for the, any of those where, based on where we are with the offer and because they're paying cash. Correct. So we'll just put a zero there because we don't want to leave things blank. Initials here. Are we going to ask for a home warranty? Well, I believe this one is coming with it. Yeah, it's coming with the 210 home warranty. 
Let's see. All right. Kick back on Topsoil Island. A 210 home warranty is offered. All right. So all we do in this situation is we come here and we put seller has obtained from 210 warranty. And I would just put seller because we don't have an amount, but we don't really need an amount. They've already obtained it. Okay. So just put that in there. Then coming down here, possession. So if the buyer was trying to take possession before closing or the seller was going to main possession after closing, or if there's a lease in place, you would check one of the appropriate boxes here. That doesn't apply to this one, so it doesn't matter. And then if any other addenda apply, we would check here. Okay, so additional provisions, we're not using that. We're not using any of these. We're not using FHA, VA. That's the, probably the most typical one on here. This one isn't rented right or doesn't, it's not rented for vacation or are there leases in place? They're not. Nope. All right. So you would do a vacation rental addendum like if they have weeks booked going forward already, but again, it doesn't apply here. Um, any other addenda we would put here and I don't think we're going to have any. Oh, the coastal hazard addenda. They, it, they included that when it's a beach house, there's a coastal hazard addendum that talks about the flood insurance and all of that right. um, most of the time the seller provides that but if the seller isn't the listing agent isn't you might want to ask them to complete one and send it to you and make it especially if it's waterfront or on the be on the island so it, for this one i'm going to check the box and include coastal hazard addendum and then same thing here two years ago this thing was 13 pages long Last year it went 14. Now it's 15. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Sorry. All right, so page 12, there's nothing to complete. It's just initials. Page 13, this is where the um, client sign. So you just go in and assign the signatures here like you assign the initials on all the other pages. Okay. You don't need to assign anything over here. If it was an organization, this is where you would assign the signature like we talked about on the um, agency agreement. Now you just leave it alone. No initials here. This is um, where you fill out all of your information and it's going to pull from that thing that you already, you already entered all your information. You just want to make sure you check buyer's agent because you're representing the buyer. Okay. And of course it kicked all the way back up. So let me get back to the page. Click buyer's agent and then you remember the firm license? C28119. Yes, way to go. Um, so your information is all complete over here, but okay. you, you need to fill out the information for the seller to, for the listing agent. Okay. And okay. all of that is right here in MLS. So all you got to do is, you know, come and copy and paste the whole thing. So Christina Asbury, seller's agent. This is this number right here is her license number. So just copy and paste it. Here's her phone number, so just copy and paste it. Here's her email, so just copy and paste it. Here's her firm number, so just copy and paste it. This is the name of the branch, same thing. Oh, I got that wrong. Sorry. Her name goes here. <laughs> they go here. And then if you just click on um, what's clickable, the link, then it'll give you more information about our firm. And then you can just get the address from here. Oh, okay.
and then on the initials again, and then on page 15, which is the DD and earnest money receipt page, basically just make sure that all the information is here. Okay. You wanna put in the amount for the due diligence in the top two boxes, because the top one is if the listing agent touches it, they need to sign that they've touched it, and then this is where the seller sign. Now, part of dot loop, it's important to remember that you unassign the signature here, because if you share it with your clients, you might accidentally share it with your, the listing agent, and they might see it before you get the offer complete. So just make sure that's never assigned, okay? And then the earnest money pulls in here, and then this is where the only other edit you'd make regarding the attorney is you just put the name here okay. as well, because then they'll sign it when they get it. And then all you do is hit save, and then you share it with your clients, you hit share, and you make sure they're both checked. If for some reason the listing agent, if their signature is still there, it will show up right here. And what you want to do is if you, it is still there, at the very least, if you leave the signature assigned, you change to uh, can't edit or something like that, whatever it shows. Okay. Um, so, but it's best just to get not included on there. And then if you want to share it to your client, you just hit share and you're good to go. Okay. You want me to send it or you want to check on the attorney first? Um, you can go ahead and send it. I'll get her the attorney information. Okay. So there you go. And that's it. That's how you write an offer. Any questions? And so this once after they sign it, it automatically goes to the listing agent, right? No, it doesn't. It'll come back to you and then you'll need to share all the documents at once. And we can talk about that um, after you get everything back. Okay. Perfect. Okie dokie.